Good morning and welcome to the fifth of the EARMA digital sessions. I'm Niall, EARMA's communications officer, and I will be the web host for this session this morning. Um, I'd just like to ex briefly explain the format to you, uh, and, and this is so you can participate, and we'd encourage you to do so as much as you possibly can through the session. On the bottom of your Zoom screen, you will see a black bar. And on that black bar, you have a certain, you have a number of uh, tabs there, uh, with different labels on them. Um, for the, for, for you to, to, to pose your questions to us during the sessions, there's a Q&A tab. Hit Q&A and you'll be able to put your questions to us directly uh, for the questions and answers. And throughout the session, we will be going through the questions and putting them to the speakers for you to, for you to participate. And, um, We'll try and get through as many as we can uh, with those, but again, we'd have to ask, ask you to actively, actively uh, participate in, in this session. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to our moderator for today, and that's Evelina Branville. And Evelina Branville is a research manager with the Lula University of Technology. Um, Evelina is a member of the ARMA board uh, and is the outgoing chair of the annual conference program committee. And um, for any of you who have been involved uh, with the sessions or participating uh, earlier in the week and last week, um, the ACPC has been heavily involved in, in organizing this event and, and putting this uh, interesting and exciting program together. So um, now I'll hand you over to Evelina and I hope you enjoy the session today. Thank you. Thank you, Niall. Um, hello, everyone. Hello, Europe. And I hope that we have participants also outside Europe who are interested in very um, important topic, which is from Horizon 2020 to Horizon Europe, strengthening the widening measures and the challenges for RMA. And I have a great pleasure to introduce you uh, today's two speakers. Uh, one, uh, Zygmunt Krasinski and Katarzyna Walczyk-Matoszyk. And I will tell a few words about uh, each of the presenters. So Zygmunt Krasinski is a director of the National Contact Point for Research Programs of the EU at the Institute of Fundamental Technological Research Polish Academy of Sciences and uh, H2020 National NCP Coordinator. He is also a member of the Horizon 2020 and Horizon Europe Shadow Strategic Configuration Program Committees, as well as the Eastern Partnership Panel on Research and Innovation. Uh, probably a lot of us uh, know that uh, Zygmunt has uh, uh, experience as an expert in several European Commission working groups. Uh, he's an advisor for EU research and development programs. He's also a trainer and author of publications in the field of research and innovation management. And uh, please look at the yarma.org web page and you will see a little bit more details about Zygmunt. And I will introduce now Katarzyna Walczyk Matuszek. And she is a deputy director in the National Contact Point for research programs for the EU. Katarzyna is a member of the Strategic Committee and Committee for SMEs at the European Commission. Her fields of specialization are innovation, cooperation, industry, academia, synergies, and international cooperation. She is also a member of several committees on structural funds and complementary funding. And also since 2015, she is president of the association of the top 500 innovators, also alumnus of the top 500 innovators program at Stanford University, Palo Alto, California. And please also go to yarma.org webpage to see a little bit more information on Katarzyna. And as you see, we have real experts um, presenting today, very important topic, and uh, I will not um, uh, wait anymore and give the word for Zygmunt and Katarzyna, please. Okay, thank you, Evelina. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Yeah. Okay, so let us start. Uh, we, we have prepared uh, some slides for you. So I will start, uh, I will start uh, with a short introduction about our presentation today. So uh, it is, as Evelina said, we would like to focus on framework programs on this transition from, from Horizon 2020 to Horizon Europe. Uh, and 
in particular on widening, uh, widening approach, widening measures, because what we really believe for increasing the competitiveness of the European Union, we should use the whole potential of all the countries, including the new member states with, with the more than 100 million of population. Uh, so, uh, may I ask for the next slide? As it was already said, uh, me and Katarzyna, we represent the national contact uh, point in Poland. This organization was established many years ago, more than 20, 20 years ago in 1999 at the Institute of Fundamental Technological Research, Polish Academy of Sciences. Our organization has a long-standing experience in NCP activities. Currently, uh, we perform the role of the Polish uh, of the Polish uh, NCP for Horizon 2020, but also for the Europe Euratom Fusion, as well. We coordinate the Polish part of the EuroAccess network. We are the coordinator of Polish NCP network, which comprises uh, of NCP Poland and 11 regional contact points located in in major academic centers in our country. So. NCP in Poland, as the national organization, is an integral part of the European NCP network, and uh, our activities are funded by the Polish Minister of Science and Higher Education, but also by, by the European uh, Commission. We also have gained a great experience as a partner in more than 150 framework program projects, being the leader of more than 20 such projects. And very important, last but not least, we have been the institutional member of Yarma since 2004. So we really participate actively in development of our organization. So, uh, as I have already said, uh, uh, today we are focusing on framework programs, we are focusing on strengthening, uh, widening measures. As we know, the Horizon 2020, uh, the last year of this program is is now uh, is now ongoing uh, ongoing with the with the last course uh, with the uh, highest budgets in general uh, this program is the biggest EU research innovation program uh, mean, meaningful uh, budget uh, with nearly 80 billion euro so everybody knows and also this program promises more breakouts discoveries and were first by, take, by taking great ideas from the lab to the market. So, so the instruments of Horizon 2020 covers um, all this innovation, innovation, innovation uh, process. Uh, we are very glad that you invest more and more in, in research and innovation area. Uh, and uh, uh, I think uh, nowadays, nowadays, uh, being a part uh, and being actively involved in the preparation of Horizon Europe, being actively involved in this period of transition between the framework uh, program programs, um, uh, we should uh, remember that uh, there is a very important role in this process for research managers and administrators, especially especially in this very difficult uh, pandemia, pandemia period. So uh, let, me, let me share with you uh, some uh, main observation on, on implementation of Horizon 2020. Uh, okay, so now I, I, I can start uh, from the top. So for sure, uh, for sure, um, the Horizon 2020 and uh, framework program in general uh, Horizon 2020 is a Champions League for research and innovation. So what, what we observe, uh, the most ambitious projects and competing institutions representing more than 160 countries. Of course, we have, we have, we have uh, the problem, the problem, the challenge of oversubscription. Um, so uh, it results uh, in it that having a budget limitations, we are able to finance just 25% of proposals with the score above threshold. It's a pity. It's a pity. That's why we vote for more, more budget in, uh, within the Horizon Europe, so the next framework program. 
from the point of view of, of management, uh, Horizon 2020, in our opinion, is too complex and having too many different instruments. So thinking about the new Fermec program, we are focusing on this, on this, on this problem. For example, we are trying to reduce the number of European partnerships, uh, as you know. Uh, for sure, the added value of Horizon 2020 is uh, collaborative research. So, uh, by we all know that collaborative research, uh, in the, which which are uh, which is created by international and intersectoral consortia, by definition, uh, it is a great challenge uh, from the point of view of research management and administra administra administration. So we still uh, have to deal with the phenomenon of old boys clubs and uh, it results in strong ge geographical and institutional, institutional concentration of participants in Horizon 2020. The next slide, please. Let us look into the current statistics on uh, Horizon 2020. As we can see, uh, despite serious efforts by the European Commission, uh, but also member states, uh, as well as inclusion um, of the widening package in Horizon 2020, significant, significant gaps um, uh, remain among European countries in terms of Horizon 2020 uh, performance. This is due to different factors, including uh, stiff regulations on participations, for example, uh, remuneration rules, but also purer visibility of EU certain excellence. Uh, already mentioned old boys clubs reflected in closer cooperation partners or brain drain effect. Uh, looking into the numbers compared to the beginning of March 2000, 2019, the share of Horizon 2020 funding uh, going to EU certain countries has slowly increased from 5.3% to 5.7%. But it is still, in our opinion, much below the potential of new member states in the area of research and innovation. Uh, let me mention about, about, about um, uh, the results of Polish institutions. In the case of Poland, during uh, the last year, Horizon 2020 funding received uh, has increased by 50%. It is quite quite good result, but it is still the share in total of 1.2% among uh, EU 20. 28. So the problem is uh, still still exists the problem of of a geographical concentration. Uh, may I ask for the next slide? Yeah. Uh, so within a month of uh, 575 million uh, euro of Horizon 2020 funding received, Poland was ranked on the 15th is ranked on the 15th position in the EU, uh, EU uh, 28 ranking, being also a leader among EU 13 countries. So on the next slide, we can see the list of top 10 organizations uh, in Horizon 2020. We observe very strong institutional concentration of Horizon 2020 participants among more than 60, uh, 33,000 organizations participate, participating in the program. Top 10 of them received about 10% of total Horizon 2020 uh, funding. And now it's time for, for some reflection because in our opinion, excellence is present in all European countries and it would be good, it would be good to use, use this potential for Europe. But uh, the challenge is that the visibility of, for example, some uh, member states, new member states, is, uh, uh, is significantly lower than, than the others. Uh, let me show you just one example of excellence this example uh, is coming from Poland. Uh, I would like to, to present the project of Professor Magdalena Kurt from Warsaw University of Life Sciences. This project was presented among 10 ERC grants 
recorded by the European Research Council on the occasion of the ERC 10th anniversary. And the latest news uh, concerning the achievements of uh, Professor Krull is that she has just received the second ERC grant, namely proof of concept. So, uh, excellence, excellence, excellence exists in all the countries, in all the, the regions. Okay, so let us move into the widening package in Horizon 2020. I would like to give the floor to Katarzyna. Thank you very much, Sigmund. So, um, widening package is a very important part of Horizon 2020. Uh, its goal is to support centers of excellence in building excellence in the regions, in the widening regions, in the widening countries, uh, to uh, provide the visibility, to provide the measures and tools and make the centers visible, but also make them more active and successful in obtaining future grants from the framework programs. So that was the main idea of the uh, Horizon uh, 2020 widening package, uh, which was constructed, uh, replacing the predecessor, the great predecessor of the uh, current instruments, uh, which was uh, in the seventh framework program called uh, Research Potential. So the widening package includes uh, currently the most important three instruments, which is the teaming, teaming for excellence. This is related to the institution building, so building of the institution of the centers of excellence, leading in the search and research domain in the region, in the country, but also uh, uh, institutions that are actively shaping the, uh, the research and innovation ecosystem in the country, and they are providing the uh, uh, critical mass for transfer knowledge, for transfer of innovation, and that are also involved into collaboration companies and other actors of the socio-economic environment. Teaming is divided into two phases. So the Centers of Excellence firstly applies for a grant uh, that enables the centers to present uh, centers uh, in the future. And uh, the beneficiaries of the Teaming 1 grants uh, afterwards can obtain and can apply for the Teaming 2 uh, grants. The teaming uh, is important in that sense that the grants of the teaming two are of uh, up to 50 million euros in total, but they have to be complemented by the uh, complementary funding offered by the region or the country in the same amount as a center is applying uh, under Horizon 2020. So, so in total, we have uh, centers of excellence with a budget exceeding uh, Mm, or uh, amounting 30 million euros. Of course, teaming is performed in the consortia because this is a very important difference between a widening package uh, in the framework program uh, Horizon 2020 in comparison to the seventh framework program. In Horizon 2020, uh, the majority of the instrument has to be implemented in the international consortia. In the team in the consortium is simplified. We have a partner from a widening country, which has to be a coordinator. And then we have a member of the consortium, a partner, an advanced partner coming from an advanced country. It has to be at least one, but there, is, there are no limits in regard to the maximum number. Then we have a twinning. Twinning is institutional building, uh, I'm sorry, it's an institutional networking. So it allows to, be, to create a network uh, gathered uh, over a significant research topic uh, consisting of three partners is a classical uh, framework program consortium and the network has the opportunity to exchange researchers where they can get uh, let's say they have uh, know-how and experience related uh, to the uh, to the topic very important part of uh, twinning and teaming uh, uh, and errors as well uh, is of course the research management part, but I will tackle that point uh, a bit later on. The third very important grant is the Eracher. Eracher is bringing a significant researcher, being as well a manager, uh, allowing the um, institution to reform, to build an excellent research, excellent, but also active uh, department or part of the institution, or if it's a small research institution, it gets to be also the reform of the entire institution. Uh, and make the institution visible uh, in the international environment. 
This is a single beneficiary grant, so it allows um, to, to boost the potential of the institution. In all the three measures I have mentioned, um, research management is very much welcome and it's even required to mention the, the part. So in the teaming, we usually tackle the point to establish a research management uh, unit in the future teaming center. In twinning the trainings, uh, a part of a training is also related to the research uh, management and administrative and management. So in the twinning, also the administrator, administrators, uh, research administrators are allowed to, to participate in the twinning actions. And in the other terms, we also tackle the point by building a special department related to the research management. Because in all the three grants, uh, one of the outputs should be that the centers, that the centers of excellence should be more active in applying for grants under framework program. And the research excellence was, uh, uh, was tackled as the weakest link, one of the weakest link of the systems in the widening countries in regard to the um, application process, but also to the building excellence. Therefore, Commission is putting a lot of attention already in the last course we had those issues mentioned. They weren't introduced from the very beginning. They were introduced like uh, in the, after the midterm evaluation of the Horizon 2020. So uh, Widening Fellowships, these are the individual fellowships uh, of the Maris Kurowska Kiri actions, but dedicated to widening countries. So there's a special amount of money dedicated to the hosting institutions in widening countries. And the projects which has not been uh, classified uh, as uh, successful in the individual fellowships of the Maris Kurowska Kiri actions and um, uh, express their interests uh, that they should be uh, implemented under the winding fellowships, they can be implemented, but the amount of money is not very much significant. It's a 30 million euros, so uh, the potential is much bigger in the winding countries. Later on, we have other actions, NCP. This is a NCP Widenet project. I will tackle the point later. I'm the coordinator of the project, and this is a very important instrument supporting uh, the, uh, the sharing uh, aware, uh, I mean, spreading uh, excellence, sharing awareness on the widening package as well. Then we have a policy support facility, PSA, very important political instruments relying in bringing to widening countries a group of experts who are scanning the research innovation systems and then afterwards preparing a report and a set of recommendations for the country where, uh, which way the reforms should go in order to make the system more adapted to the European um, policy requirements. Of course, this is not an obligatory instrument at the end. I mean, not, not, ob not obligatory uh, recommendations in the, in the report. Uh, it's up to the country uh, if the country will adopt it in the total or just will adopt a part or at all. And last but not least, cost. In the Horizon 2020, the half of the cost actions uh, is uh, financed from the widening package. Uh, it's a bit different in the Horizon Europe. You will see later on. So. Uh, the cost also put uh, some uh, um, indicators that a uh, significant part of the participants in the cost sections should come from the widening countries itself. This is one issue. And the other point is that in, under the cost sections, we also have actions dedicated to the research management and administration. Best practice was one of them. The total budget at the end of the day of the package was uh, approximately 900 million euros. Okay, and let's have a look uh, on these, uh, who are the widening countries. So in order to select the widening countries from the, from the portfolio of the countries being a member of the European Union and uh, being also associated countries, a special composite indicator representing research excellence was introduced. There was a huge discussion at the end of the FP7 how we should tackle the point of the widening countries because in the seventh framework program, um, uh, the widening concept was a bit different. It was uh, related only to the regions with the GDP per capita uh, lower than 70% of the average European GDP per capita. Uh, the approach in Horizon uh, 2020 completely changed because now we are talking about the level of the country. So we are not talking about regions, but the country. So we have only widening countries as such. And how to uh, distinguish those, how to select the group of the countries. Then a special indicator was introduced only tackling the point of the research excellence. Um, and this composite indicator includes the following components. So uh, highly cited publications in non-publications, uh, science matrix uh, data using the Scopus data are here used, the number of scientific universities and public research organization in a country basing on the Leiden ranking and uh, SCIAMO uh, ranking 
then P cells, but not least the value of the ELC drugs. And having this um, indicator, the group of the widening countries was selected. Of course, the data coming from 2000 and uh, 13 were used, so it was long ago. As you can see, those marked red on my slide are the widening countries. This is the, uh, these are all the EU 13 countries plus Portugal and plus Luxembourg. At the end of the day, it appeared to be like this. Uh, this is the widening package, the numbers related to the budget currently spread uh, when almost all the, I mean, all the calls are closed currently and um, the last results of the twinning and errors has been announced. So as you can see on the slide, uh, the number for the, the, the amount for Belgium might be misleading because this is the amount offered uh, for the cost actions to the cost organization, association, the cost association, which is located in uh, Brussels. So this is just because the Belgium has package. Afterwards, you can see the other countries. Uh, the, the leader uh, of the widening package is currently Cyprus, followed by Portugal, and on the third position we have Poland. Uh, in the ranking you can see as well uh, advanced partners such as Germany, such as still United Kingdom, uh, such as uh, France, Finland. Why is that? Because of course uh, advanced partners are a must in widening consortia. So while talking about the impact of the widening package, we can see that the 335 projects have been financed under the package. Uh, 618 organizations are taking part within the package and 41 countries are participating. So this is uh, related to the, to the widening countries uh, and non-widening countries. Uh, now let's see the spread of the budget in regard to the particular um, instruments offered by the widening package teaming. This includes teaming phase one and teaming phase two. As you can see, three fourths uh, of the budget is coming to the widening countries. Uh, here the leader is Cyprus. Uh, follow clearly successful in the last call for proposal related to the team group because six of our centers were applied and three were granted with the grant. So it means that our success rate was 50%. It was mentioned uh, by uh, Director General and also other officials of the European Commission as one of the greatest success of the widening country under the widening package. So we are quite proud of this. I will uh, show you an example of the, of the centers of excellence later on. While talking about um, uh, uh, non-widening countries, you can see that the leaders are uh, organizations from Germany taking part in the teaming consortia. Uh, Germany traditionally is a leader uh, in cooperation with the EU 13 countries due to the geographical reasons, uh, especially, but also to the special, let's say, uh, strategy prepared by the German authorities. Then we have still UK. Now twinning. Twinning is quite interesting uh, when we have a look on the budget. Uh, more than 120 million euros have been um, uh, spread uh, uh, under the twinning. As you can see that uh, the half of the budget is dedicated to the widening countries and the rest is going to the non-widening countries with the UK this time being a leader. So uh, widening countries are very, uh, uh, they, they like to collaborate with UK universities. And the errors, this is a monobeneficiary proposal, so, so as you can see here, um, on the widening countries are being represented. Uh, Estonia uh, is a fantastic, they, they did a fantastic job in obtaining the grant, so they are really a leader. Uh, and the um, organize, research organization universities from Estonia are really leaders of the widening package. Afterwards, we have, of course, Cyprus, Portugal, and Poland. So here you have uh, the um, coordinators of the last teaming to call, very prestigious one, consider, considered to be one of the most prestigious under Horizon 2020, next of course to the ERC grants. And uh, it was a big ceremony during the Research and Innovation Days. The coordinators uh, have been in, were introduced by the by, uh, Director General. And we have three centers from Poland, SANO, uh, Nomaten, and Sieć Badawcza Łukasiewicz, ITME Research Institute. Just to give you a brief overview of what this center can be about. So the Teaming 2 project center uh, is located in the coordinator, the future coordinator is located in Krakow. This is the uh, AGH University uh, and they are focusing on the computational medicine. 
So the center would combine expertise in, ma expertise in machine learning based on decision science with fundamental biomarker identification. So it should be a great help to the doctors to do the, to adapt the therapy measures to the disease symptoms. And the center located in Krakow is collaborating with the partners from uh, UK, Sheffield University, as well as with the partners from, uh, from Germany. The center um, will offer special services to the hospitals, but also will collaborate closely in the future to industry. Uh, while we were working uh, jointly with the center on prepare, preparing the proposal, uh, we have prepared as well a strategy which uh, reached beyond 10 years of its existence. So it was also very important to identify a financial portfolio for the center and diversify the financial portfolio to ensure the sustainability. Uh, the part, the very important part of the, of the portfolio were, were the future grants uh, and the, the grants were based uh, on uh, uh, preparing and elaborating the excellence uh, in the research management as well. So it was quite important part here. Then the success story of the ERACHER, the CREATE project. This is the creation of the Department of Physical Chemistry of Bio Biological Systems, Institute of Physical Chemistry, Polish Academy of Science, two and a half million, the project. Uh, so the the uh, the institute's uh, the, the goal of the institute was to reform to bring the, the reform to this uh, to this department and uh, to create a research excellence at the global level, but also to bring uh, to bring uh, the research capacity um, and other issues which are very much important to present uh, the institute in the future as the leading. Uh, as a leading actor in the global scene of uh, physical chemistry. And last but not least, we have as well a uh, project Agnum and it's a twinning success story. Uh, because you can presume that the majority of the widening project as it is in the entire horizon are related to the technology and scientific, like a, like a hard science, biotech med, medicine and so on. But the one we got is quite interesting. It's related to linguistic studies. It's uh, coordinated by the University of Warsaw in collaboration with the foreign partners. And um, the project uh, is related to the uh, studies on... Um, restoration of uh, languages which are uh, on the verge of extinction. Uh, so the Department of the Linguistic developed quite interesting uh, method to sustain the languages by involving uh, the um, local community and bringing the cultural heritage in the, uh, the local languages and also restoring the cultural heritage through using the local language. But no, it's not only related to the cultural heritage, but also, to, let's say, to the social life and to the education. So uh, thanks to it, uh, we can now in Poland, but also Europe and in the world, have uh, access to some languages which really were on the, are on the verge of extinction. So these were the three examples of the uh, project. And last but not least, I would like to also show you um, and tell you a few words of the project. This is the NCT Ynet project. I have a pleasure to be a coordinator of the project with the great consortium consisting of 17 partners coming from widening and non-widening countries. And invite you to visit our project because it is a think tank on widening. So what we do on a daily basis, we are trying to present you all the news related to widening, not only to the calls, but uh, we the annual basis where you can find that interesting. Here you can see a cover of one of the bulletin. We had a forward by, uh, we have a pleasure to have a forward by Mr. Jean-Éric Paquet, Director General of the DG Research and Innovation. Um, who uh, what was, was talking about the winding package and also a, a bit about the future, so I recommend you to go there. Uh, in the e bulletin, you can find uh, examples of the winding um, uh, proposals, uh, sorry, to the winding proposal success stories, as well as guidelines related to the um, how to apply. You can find recent publications, invitations to um, some events. Uh, and we are also trying to tackle points which are very important uh, in regard to the widening issues like synergies, like complementary funding. And I'm sure in the next issues, we will also tackle a point 
uh, of uh, research management. And I wish the opportunity that we have such a great collaboration with AI currently. We also prepare guidelines for applicants and stakeholders. Events, webinars, seminars, workshop. This is our daily basis job. Of course, currently in the COVID pandemic situation, it's a bit different because we planned to be uh, in the WIRE conference uh, in Split, also to be as a part of the ARMA annual conference. But thanks to now, we have an online meeting with the ARMA. And also, we will offer soon a set of webinars to our um, uh, stakeholders, hoping that in the future, we will be able to come back on the scene with the real events. So I would like to invite you to join our e Latin, follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, and you have here the address of our uh, website. So I think it will be quite interesting for you. Uh, basing on our uh, currently almost seven years experience related to Horizon 2020, but also looking back in the seventh framework program, uh, I would like to have a few uh, say you a few words related to the challenges and opportunities which we have observed in regard to the participation of widening countries in the framework program. I have selected only a few, the most important one. Mm, the full analysis is present in one of our reports, which is which is a benchmark report on uh, how to put, uh, on uh, success factors in the participation of teaming and twinning and building the potential for the teaming and twinning actions, which you can find on the website of the NCP Wide. So let me go to this most important challenges and opportunities. So the synergies. The synergies is a very important part of the participation of widening countries in the framework programs um, and the seal of excellence itself uh, because it's an encouragement. Currently we had a seal of excellence for the um, uh, SME instrument phase one, phase two. Now it's a EIC uh, accelerator. Uh, we also had an, uh, there, there were like uh, there were attempts to to implement seal of excellence in, in other instruments successfully, but we have observed that companies who had the opportunity to go firstly to Horizon and then go to the other uh, national or regional uh, sources are uh, let's say lured by the opportunity, but uh, it has to be well elaborated because now the state aid rules are quite um, a barrier but also not only state aid rules, uh, which does not allow to give the same amount of money to the projects, uh, which uh, were initially thought in the application for Horizon 2020. Then also we have evaluation rules a bit different and the project has to be in fact for region. So our uh, voice is that this should be changed. Then uh, synergies between teaming of excellence. And we consider this a very important part because uh, the synergies uh, bring the awareness of the national or regional authorities and also their involvement. If they give money, they want to give the money for something and they want to see the results. But on the other hand, they are quite well involved and they are uh, preparing uh, a path for the um, development of, and blooming of the center. So as well, this, uh, this issue, remuneration rules. Uh, at the beginning of Horizon, it was very uh, a big disadvantage for the widening countries due to the lack of uh, uh, possibility of, of having an, a bonus from the framework program. This is one issue. And the other issue that the level of salaries in widening countries in the research and innovation field is much, much lower. That is why also the budget extracted from widening countries um, under Horizon 2020 is lower uh, in comparison to, let's say, non-widening countries. It has been changed while the, there was a commissioner Wedash, uh, he implemented that change, but it requires a lot of work for the size of widening countries because it's required an implementation of a special remunera remuneration um, rules within a particular research institution. And it's not that easy because that rules should apply to all the funding programs uh, coming from the uh, region, from the country and the international programs. So it requires a lot of work. So st it's still a challenge. Then the research management and administration. I have mentioned that several times. We consider we consider that as, as one of the weakest links in the widening countries. So it's still a gap, a huge gap, uh, that we need not only uh, awareness of that, but we need people, we need uh, managers doing the job, but also we need uh, uh, a space to create the the special offices and last but not least training programs plus exchange of the best practices transfer of know-how and experience between advanced and widening countries and last but not least number of proposals as you uh, see the data uh, the results also for the um, lower success rates and the lower amounts of the projects is related to the number of proposals and widening countries are less active 
in Horizon 2020 uh, on average than the non-widening countries. Uh, this is due to many issues. One of the issues is also the portfolio of the structural files available, uh, available on the market. The other point is the visibility. The third point is the old, boy, old, old boys club. So it's very difficult to enter the closed networks by the, by the uh, new partners coming from uh, European, uh, Eastern Europe, EU13, Portugal. So having all these, we are now uh, doing a big step to Horizon uh, Europe. And in Horizon Europe, you, uh, the widening package is there. It's a bigger one, because now is the widening participation and strengthening the European research area package. It's one horizontal program. And here we have widening participation and spreading excellence, plus reforming and enhancing the European research and innovation system. So th this is the widening package, uh, at least it's, uh, uh, frame uh, in the future. Uh, the most important point of the widening package remains the excellence. So uh, the goal of the package is to support, build, develop, boost the excellence of the research institutions, centers of excellence in widening countries to enable them uh, the successful participation in the research at the European research area and also applications. So uh, the main goals are sustained, is this the foster public participation, facilitate collaboration links and contribute to reducing research and innovation demand. At least 3.3% of the future budget of Horizon 2020 will be dedicated to the widening package. So it's a significant grow. If we have uh, back in our mind that the first proposal of the budget related to Horizon Europe was uh, 100, 100 billion US. What's new, uh, the, maybe what's, what's re, what will remain, teaming to winning errors and cost will remain with slight changes, which are related to the experience we made throughout the seven years. So it will be, let's say, enhanced. Then national contact point support is sustained, of course. It will be a new service offered. It will be also the pre-proposal check. So not in all widening countries, the um, NCPs are doing the project of the proposals, uh, supporting the uh, applicants for the successful applications in Poland, where we're working with them. Uh, it was a special event mentoring program and pre-check of proposals was, was a part of this, but uh, the experience with it was that the pre-check is very important. So the future action under the widening package should as well support the, uh, the, the pre-proposal check. After we have very important new initiative, it will be an excellence initiative. The new instrument related to the support of the uh, excellence and concentrated only on the excellence. Because teaming to an encourages call, there are of course CSA actions, whereas the uh, excellence initiative should tackle directly the point of the excellence. Uh, currently there are works under the uh, excellence initiative, how does it should, should look like? So we'll see soon, I suppose, the reason. Brain circulation, so what is now under the widening fellowships? Uh, uh, it is the discussion what should be a format of the future brain circulation instrument, but its, uh, its place is in the future widening package. The new, but it's not really the new, the hop on was in the fifth framework program and it is repeated now in the, uh, should be repeated now in the Horizon Europe. So hop on is about bringing to the existing cons project consortium partners from widening country. And there should be a special budget dedicated for these partners. There should be a special, let's say, uh, let's say internal call or internal procedure enabling in, in, in implementing the partners from widening country into the project. So there will be a hop on project. We will have, of course, the possibility for the matchmaking, uh, matchmaking uh, events like brokerage events and other events, enabling the uh, boosting of the visibility of the centers of excellence from widening countries, but also building the consortium. And what is important, we have a changes in the in indicator. I presented to you the indicator quite detailed. Uh, uh, now, these issues related to the research uh, are sustained. So we have also the main part of the indicators related to the research part, but also a GDP was implemented here. As a, resu as a result, we have a new group uh, of widening countries, slightly new group, because uh, Luxembourg is no longer widening countries, uh, but uh, the group, uh, uh, in the group of the widening countries, Greece. 
uh, is there. So Greece in the future financial perspective in the horizon Europe will be considered as widely countries. There was a change uh, that also outermost regions will be considered as widening and will be therefore eligible to apply as coordinators in widening actions. And those regions are mostly the regions um, of Spain, such as Canary Island, or of France, such as the Reunion Island. So we will have a slightly bigger portfolio of widening countries, plus these outer more regions uh, in the future. So as for now, the widening package looks like this. Of course, these are uh, internal works now related to the particular elements, uh, puzzles, as you see, of the, of the package. And soon we will know uh, the answer. So now I will give the floor to Zygmunt. Oh, exactly. Thank you very much, Katarzyna. So uh, this part, we say that uh, transition uh, from Horizon 2020 to Horizon Europe will be rather evolution than uh, revolution. Uh, there is a number of key novelties in Horizon Europe uh, foreseen, which will for sure create new challenges for research management and administration, uh, starting from the programming phase, um, and going through the realization, the, the, the impact assessment, and of course possible mitigation measures. So these novelties are as follows. Uh, development of uh, the pilot of European Innovation Council, new concept, political concept of research and innovation missions, uh, a new approach to partnerships, uh, European partnerships, decreasing the number of, of uh, partnerships. Uh, let me just mention three, three, uh, three of them. And may I ask for, for the next slide? And having uh, all this in mind, uh, we should again uh, ask the question how to catalyze the whole potential of European research area in Horizon, in horizon Europe. Uh, as we know, we have excellent research teams uh, in all countries, including new member states. We have excellent innovators with, with ambitious ideas. Uh, we have a, a, a plenty of new research infrastructures uh, uh, financed by the structure of funds and also other resources. So the answer in general is uh, let us better cooperate between, uh, I mean, teams uh, from EU 13 and uh, EU, EU 15. So, uh, so the, 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 the idea, is, uh, idea is to open the uh, cooperation networks, to open the consortia for the new newcomers representing uh, all, the, all, the, all the regions. And uh, while preparing uh, the Horizon Europe, many countries, uh, many countries presented their position papers, including Polish position papers. And uh, uh, we could observe in many position uh, papers presented by, 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 by the countries, uh, some new approach uh, uh, in regards to um, securing Europe's global competitiveness. This using of, of the whole full intellectual capital of Europe, uh, the capital existing in all the countries, but also, also a, a contribution to a single EU market for research innovation through increasing market uptake of innovation across all European regions, because we, we should produce some new technologies, some innovations, and uh, in this way, in this way, try to try to um, uh, increase our position as a Europe on the global global market, and uh, recommendations were also focused on the strengthening the widening instruments. So, uh, uh, first of all, further strengthening widening package, but also strengthening some horizontal widening measures in order to include, uh, as I have mentioned already, the new partners in in the consortia which. Uh, which are implementing the projects. So here, here is a, there was a proposition of additional selection criterion based on uh, based on geographical di diversity and again remuneration rules. So this remuneration gap between new and old member states is, is, is still exists. Uh, we appreciate very much what was already said by Katarzyna, the the change of remuneration rules. But in our opinion, it is the process which which should be simplified uh, in the in the future. So, uh, 
<clears throat> Therefore, we appreciate very much current efforts to support wider, wider participation in Horizon Europe, which has, as, as you all know, reflected in the partial political agreement on Horizon Europe. This political agreement uh, uh, was, uh, uh, was reached uh, uh, about one year ago between the, 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 the European Parliament and the um, uh, EU, EU Council. Uh, common understanding document includes, uh, first of all, uh, a continuation of the significantly strengthened widening package. It was already presented by Katarzyna, at least 3.3% of the budget. It means that uh, compared to the Horizon 2020, the budget may be increased even by three or four times. It is, it is, it is, it is really uh, something, and also new horizontal widening instruments, like for example new exact for selection criterion based in, based on geographical diversity, which is uh, which is added in Article Twenty Five of the uh, uh, understanding uh, document. So, uh, uh, <clears throat> may I ask for the next slide? Katarzyna? Yes, I put it. Can you see it? No. So now, uh, yes, we, we got it. Now I would like to present, present some case studies uh, on the implementation of uh, widening uh, as one of the selection criteria for excellent projects already within Horizon 2020. Uh, in our opinion, it constitutes a base for broader uh, implementation within Horizon 2020 and Horizon, Horizon Europe. So uh, first of all, such widening based uh, selection criterion was implemented within, within the last two spreading excellence and widening participation uh, package calls, uh, namely teaming uh, phase two, twinning and era chairs. So this exact for selection criterion for excellent proposals with coordinators established in, uh, in widening countries, not otherwise covered by more highly ranked proposals. So the idea was uh, um, to, to develop the even distribution of grant among widening uh, countries. And the second uh, example is uh, implementation of widening criterion in the collaborative uh, projects uh, may we come back to to counter the slide, Katarzyna? Yes. And here, here we have the case study of the Quantera Era Net Co-Fund. Uh, Quantera, uh, Quantera is implemented in, in, in the field of quantum technologies, very advanced area uh, in the European Union. Uh, it, it is the only Era Net Co-Fund coordinated by, by the EU 13 country. The coordinator is located in Poland, it is National Science uh, Center. The project is ongoing and the consortium uh, consists of uh, 32 European funding agencies. So uh, one of the main goals of Quantera uh, uh, is spreading research excellence throughout the, uh, the whole European research uh, area. Uh, in joint call proposals, consortia are encouraged to include partners from the widening countries and what is the result of it? Uh, widening countries participate in 70% and 90% of Quantera funded, funded projects under co-funded call 2017 and 2019 respectively. So it is a great result and great instrument how to cooperate better. I mean new member states and uh, all member states and it was these conditions were, uh, were agreed among all the European uh, agencies in, the, in this very promising uh, research area. And last but not least, I would like to uh, mention about, um, about the widening uh, participation realized uh, by the European the EIT innovation communities. Uh, the EIT innovation committees are integral part, of course, of Horizon 2020. Within, within, uh, within uh, uh, these grants, 
this, uh, this pro EIT program. Uh, uh, the regional innovation scheme was, was introduced uh, uh, in order to bring the knowledge and good practices to 18 countries that are modest and, or moderate innovators. And results also are very promising, uh, at least in the case of Poland, Poland is the ninth largest beneficiary of EIT grants, and uh, Poland re received 2.6% uh, uh, of, uh, of EIT grants compared to 1.2%, per, um, uh, which was achieved in, in, in Horizon 2020 as a whole. So we really believe that the new widening measures will be widely implemented in all parts of Horizon. Europe. And the last part is for Katarzyna. Thank you very much, Sigmund. So let me just briefly mention at the, at the end of the presentation the important factors for a successful participation in the framework program. Uh, in general, like uh, being a summary of what we have said today and also uh, what we have observed. So very important is the uh, scientific excellence, is the uh, the most important issue. Actually, these are the framework program which, has, which are built upon the scientific excellence. So uh, the recognition of research uh, is there and the excellence is at the heart of the European research. Then the other point, which is quite important or very sa samely important, I would say, this is the connectivity. So the more widespread national and transnational networking and involvement in the expert groups of the widening uh, uh, representative st stakeholders, the better, because it allows uh, the access uh, as well uh, uh, not only for the widening partners, but also it opened the new perspective and it shows the new perspective for the advanced partners. Uh, the widening countries has a bit different socio-economical background due to the history and therefore a bit uh, different as well needs and a bit different possibilities, but this perspective should be as well there represented to uh, cover all the needs of the European research area. Last but not least, uh, uh, experience and management skills. So we have observed that the more often institutions participate in the framework program, uh, the more likely they repeat this experience and the more successful they are in the future. I showed you in one of my slides the example of the SANO project. So it was the AGH University, uh, Cifronet uh, IT Center, and they started the collaboration with the partner uh, who is uh, the most important advanced member in the Teaming 2 project, uh, mainly the Sheffield University, they started the collaboration in the fifth framework program. So in the fifth framework program, they had their first project. And then throughout the sixth and seventh framework program, they developed their collaboration, which allowed them at the end of the day to jointly create a huge center for excellence. So uh, this is quite important. And they also stress that thanks to the experience they had, they were not afraid of applying for grants because they knew how to manage the grants and uh, how to deal with all the issues related to the, to the research management. So the three important factors is the scientific excellence, more publications in um, uh, highly cited journals and highly uh, journals with uh, scores better connectivity and experience and management skills. And last but not least, what's quite important for us all, I think in the context we are currently, these are the simplified rules. So the European uh, uh, Commission decided the further alignment to the financial regulation and uh, it won't be a revolution. Uh, it won't be a revolution as Horizon Europe won't be a revolution in regard to the Horizon 2020, but it will be a level, uh, an uh, evolution, but going in the right direction. So uh, what we can expect is the simplified forms of grants were appropriate uh, within the Horizon 2020. We had lump sum pilots experience uh, to projects and that should be developed and built upon in the Horizon Europe. There will be a broader acceptance of the usual cost accounting practices. Uh, so no revolution here. Uh, also a cross reliance, um, enhanced cross reliance on audits. Uh, all these itself are not that um, uh, painful uh, in terms of, uh, of administrative burden in the structural funds, but the Commission is also going towards the direction that it should be simplified still. Uh, and uh, last but not least, uh, the Horizon 2020, uh, uh, a 
and the Horizon Europe, I mean, should offer the same uh, attractive funding model, including up to 100 funding rate of the direct cost, uh, single set of participation and principal rules. So the consistency for beneficiaries will be there, will be sustained. So we have already uh, something to, to an, an asset in hands to use uh, in Horizon Europe. Ladies and gentlemen, as you see, uh, participation in the framework program uh, is not a lack, uh, is not a trophy, it's a story you build constantly. And this message we are trying to pass throughout uh, our applicants, uh, hoping to make them the future beneficiaries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Zimon and Katarzyna. Uh, we are actually running out of time, so I would like to ask you if you could stay five, ten minutes more to answer the questions because we received some of them. And also we had some connectivity problems, so if uh, participants would like to hear some other parts, um, uh, parts that uh, from the presentation that were a little bit unclear, so please type the question. So the first question is from John Donovan. Uh, what is the relationship between other European funding and H2020 funding? Uh, so the uh, Horizon uh, 2020 uh, builds, uh, I mean, the European Commission builds upon the, uh, calls upon the synergies between the financial sources, various financial sources, which is currently the Horizon 2020 and the biggest financial source, uh, these are the structural funds, but also we have other instruments. We have a Life, Life Plus, we have uh, CEF, uh, we have Creative Europe uh, and all Cosme projects, for, for example, or other projects. And unfortunately, the majority of these projects, they have different um, rules for application and different tam timetables in regard to the opening of the call of proposals. Yet the biggest difference are related between the framework programs and the uh, tools of the cohesion policy, instruments of the cohesion policy, which are the financial instruments, because here the state aid rules applies. But uh, thanks to the collaboration uh, between the DG region, DG research um, and DG competition, uh, uh, the possibility for synergies has been elaborated within the current perspective, which is the seal of excellence, for example, uh, which is existing. And Poland is of the one example of the country where we have implemented successfully seal of excellence for this SME instrument, but also for teaming. This is the one point. Uh, and also the other point, we were working in Poland, for example, with our uh, man managing authorities uh, at the national and regional level to implement uh, extra points in the evaluation criteria for, for those consortia, for those companies or partners who had experience already in application or implementation of the Horizon 2020 projects to encourage them to this. But of course, this uh, synergy uh, part requires more and more simplifications. And this is the case currently. So the uh, DGs are working strongly on elaboration for, uh, for the future. Uh, and it might be the case, or it's already, it was already officially said that the, in the future, the seal of excellence should be a block exemption from the state aid rule, rules. So the project with the seal of excellence from Horizon Europe should be automatically uh, classified to funding uh, with very few, let's say, obligations uh, from national or regional funds. We also, while talking about synergies, we call uh, upon something which is uh, very important, mainly building a strategy. So there should be, um, the programs should not overlap in the thematic areas. The program should offer the support of the innovation chain, uh, the entire, but also structural found, sh found should enable the wide deployment and commercialization and implementation of the research results and innovation elaborated under the framework program. That's it, I think. Okay, thank you, Katarzyna. We have another question from Nick Larsen. Katarzyna mentioned that there is a lot of work to be done in widening countries in regards to RMAs. Question to both Zygmunt and Katarzyna. How do you see the situation for RMAs in Poland? Is there a growing momentum and investment? Particularly, are decision makers aware of the issue and willing to act? Okay, may I answer first? 
Yeah, so as you, as you said, uh, Nick, uh, there is a growing momentum and in investment in Poland. We have a new, uh, actually ongoing uh, reform of science and higher education with the new act of science, uh, with the internationalization of the, uh, as the one of the main, main goals uh, for our, for our uh, science. Uh, so uh, we invest uh, more money, uh, uh, in uh, the field of mobility, in the field of creating research support offices, so these are the national programs, national agency, agencies which which finance such such as things. And uh, first of all, uh, we um, we uh, can uh, can feel that there, there is the uh, there is a different approach. Uh, of the rectors of universities, of the management of, of research, research units. Uh, they are strategically oriented now to increase participation of their institutions in Horizon 2020 and Horizon Europe. That's why they also uh, have a new approach, concrete strategy on it. So uh, in parallel, they, they, have, to, um, they have, to, uh, have to focus on the uh, research leaders, but also on the research support. And I think uh, they, uh, they are doing it, and I hope it will also give some results in increasing the number of new members of IARMA in the near future. If I may add something, this is that we are uh, trying to currently raise awareness on the importance of the research management and administration for the uh, single uh, research organization and universities, showing them the added value of having the, these on board, uh, but also the systematic change uh, of the approach is, uh, uh, on my opinion, uh, re required. The other point is the lack of uh, uh, qualified staff doing, doing the job. Uh, so uh, here is a gap to be filled. Okay, thank you. We have a lot of questions uh, popping in. Uh, the next question from Job uh, Bresser, sorry for the <laughs> name. Are you content with the widening measures introduced in Horizon Europe or do you feel something is still missing? Uh, well, uh, it's a good question. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, we have observed the measures throughout the Horizon 2020 uh, and uh, the teaming twin garages are, the, are, are, are good measures. They have been uh, slightly tuned throughout its uh, implementation and now in the Horizon Europe they also will be, let's say, uh, a bit enhanced. Um, what is important uh, to my opinion uh, that we should also raise um, the point of the excellence uh, having in mind the very low number of the ERC grants in the widening countries. So uh, hopefully the new research initiative, uh, uh, the new research excellence initiative under widening package will address that point. This is the one issue. And the other issue, which in my opinion should be taken into account to a larger extent, this is the brain circulation. So en enabling the hosting institution in widening countries to uh, bringing, bringing the researchers, uh, young researchers, but also those advanced from all over the world, um, uh, to build the, the research excellence, but also to build the visibility. So uh, the emphasis as well should be put uh, on that, uh, on that uh, matter, according to me. Yeah, I would like to add here, uh, the, the crucial here, in my opinion, is to uh, implement widely the new exec for selection criteria, because this, this selection criteria is important. Why? Because we, uh, we use the same evaluation procedure. So, so we are talking about the really excellent projects. But including such criterion, we encourage potential coordinators representing all the countries, you know, to invite the excellent partners from, from all the regions which are of interest for the course, you know, for the, for the topic. And it is uh, something which will work automatically. And we needed such, a, such, a, such, a, such an instrument. Uh, so uh, it is also the role for research managers and, for, and administrators to, uh, to focus on this point and to explain this issue to, to, to the research teams and the leaders of the teams in all the countries. 
Yes, thank you. Yes, indeed. Unfortunately, we are running out of time and we still have a lot of questions, but uh, I would like to ask if it's uh, okay if uh, someone would like to ask the question directly to you to send you an email or make a call because this topic is really interesting and very important. So uh, there are a lot of questions still on this. But thank you very much. And uh, let's hope that in Horizon Europe, we will have a better participation of widening countries and uh, we will see better results for that. Thank you. Thank you, Mayo, please. Thank you very much, everybody. And uh, thank you for joining us today for our, our eArma digital session. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Katarzyna and Sigmund for this very interesting uh, presentation on a very important subject. I'd like to thank Evelina as well for hosting and moderating the session today. Now, I'd just like to quickly draw your attention to the last two of our um, EARMA digital sessions in this series. We will have more coming again. Stay tuned to find out more about them. Um, well, the first one tomorrow is on why research managers and administrators should care about quality, diversity, inclusion. So join us tomorrow afternoon for that. And then we have our European Commission speaker, Anna Panagopoulou, who is Director of Common, Imp Common Implementation Centre at DG Research and Innovation. So that would be an interesting topic then as well around implement, imp implementation strategy of Horizon Europe. So join us for that as, as well. But for now, uh, thank you very much for joining us today. And um, if you would like to see these sessions later, they will be available on our website, www.earma.org. And we'll be putting up the presentations as well from all the series of sessions. So thanks again for joining us today. Thanks for participating. We hope to see you later in the week. Goodbye.